Oh, this game is so hard. Why can't I properly do anything? I may as well just... Yo, bro, stop! I'm you from another dimension and here are 10 tips to make you better at this game. No need. I think I just don't like the game. Wait! F waste of time. Final Fantasy XIV is a game with a lot of mechanics. A lot of mechanics that both new and old players may ignore or simply not know. Today I will introduce 10 more quality of life details, watch the first one if you haven't, so that you may be more efficient and more sufficient in terms of knowledge with the game. Starting with the first one, Retainer Storage. I think I only mentioned this one briefly in my last video, but I think it is way too important to be just brushed upon. First the reason why, and then how to. Retainer, just one, gives you an additional item storage room of 175 items or 5 whole more pages. And since you can hire up to 2 retainers by default, you get literally get 10 more storage pages. This alone should make you want to unlock retainers since as you progress, it is inevitable that both you and your chocobo saddlebag will run out of storage place, especially if you're doing some of the more inventory intensive things in the game. On top of that, you get to sell using retainers, you get to store and pull out money from your retainer, give them gears, level them up, and then send them out into the wild and get rewards for their adventures. In order to unlock retainers, you will have to be level 17 or above and have completed the MSQ, The Science of the Seven Dawn. Then to fully unlock the potential retainers, you can accept the quest An Ill Conceived Venture from your starting city. You don't have to do this to unlock retainer, but since the quest doesn't take that long, you may as well do it. After you have done the quest, go talk to retainer vocates near the market boards of the main cities, and then you can hire your first retainer. By default, you can get two retainers, which is what I have, but if you are that serious with your market board game, you can hire up to 10 retainers. 7 from the mock station which you pay real money for, and 1 from the FF14 companion app. Since I just want to introduce the concept of retainer, I will stop here. There are whole videos just dedicated to the topic of retainer, and if you really wish to learn more about retainers, I would highly recommend checking them out. The links will be in the description. But as of now, just know retainers are mandatory for using market board, and just by unlocking them, you get 10 pages of additional storage. Moving on to number 2, Data Center Transfer. In order to do that, just go to an Ethernet in a main city, click on it, and just go to whatever data center you want to transfer to. While seemingly this does not do a whole lot, you get to go to a different data center, your FC buff, retainers, and normal link shell will no longer work. However, it is actually insanely OP when it comes to buying and selling stuff on the market board. In other words, making money. Let me just give you a quick example here. While the augmented Hades weapon may sell for this on this server, it actually only sells for this on this server at the exact same time. While you cannot sell on another server that you transfer to, you get to buy whatever you want on that data server as long as you have the money of course, and since you transfer with all your items including the ones that you buy from another market board, you can then sell the item which you just bought for cheaper on your home server. This becomes extremely OP when it comes to strategize setting and buying. In theory, you or a group of people can create a short-lived monopoly on a certain supplies on your market board. While I hate people who undercut me, I still feel like I gotta share this with more people, mainly so that people will buy out the people who are underselling on my server. Huh? But if you want to practice method of money making, just know that you need to have a level of understanding towards what is valuable or not in the game so that you can narrow down your search groups. Nobody will want to pay 1 million gil for a beginner weapon even when no one is currently selling them. Also, check the sale history of an item and do an abundance of research before going into practice. I found out about this method from this video, which is insanely funny, and I would highly recommend checking it out, and the link will be in the description as well. Now, if you don't want to do all these things, for the very least, knowing how to data center transfer gives you the ability to compare prices across servers for the item that you are looking into purchasing. And let me tell you, based in on my own personal experience, this will pay off massively. For instance, you see this mount? It usually sells for 14 mils on my server and one day I decided to check it out on another server and I shit you not, I got it for half the price on a different server. 
Will this always happen? Maybe not always, but you won't know until you try it out yourself. Now for the next two tips, I'll be honest in saying that I did not know their existence until very recently through the comment section of my first 10 tips video. So starting with number 3, we got teleportation tickets, or easy ride tickets to be more specific and official. These tickets essentially allow you to teleport once for free. I feel like this is the most important for beginners of the game since teleportation fees, especially to a more far away place, can quickly add up when you don't have a lot of money when you're just starting. And it still matters just on a smaller scale when you have more money later on since to save a dime is still a dime. How to obtain them then? Two forms of currency that you can use to exchange for them. Ally Seals and Centurial Seals. If you want to know how to unlock hunts, then go watch my first 10 tip video. Starting with a Realm Reborn, by doing the hunts you get Ally Seals. If you only do the weekly one, then that's 100 Ally Seals and since the tickets are being sold by the guy standing next to the board for only 5 Ally Seals, that's your first free 20 teleports of the week. But there's more. Both Heaven Sword and Stormblood's hunt reward also allow you to purchase the tickets. The only difference is that for these two expansions you get reward in the form of Centurial Seals, but the cost remains the same just fine for those seals for a ticket. However, these seals cannot be exchanged in Stormblood. You will obtain these seals by doing the Stormblood hunt, however you can only exchange them for Ezerite tickets in the Heaven Sword expansion here. Now again, if you only do the weekly ones for the two expansions, you will have 200 more seals which means 40 more free teleportations. In total, 60 free teleports by spending maximally 30 minutes per week. And there are harder hunts, the uh, rank A and the rank S hunts that give you even more ally seals and centurial seals, but those are more advanced topics and I would recommend watching more specific hound related videos to check them out. Now a bonus point related to that is the free teleportation. When you have a teleportation ticket in your inventory, by default a message will pop up asking if you want to use the ticket. This will get annoying as time goes on, so you can change the setting here by opening your teleportation page. Go to the top right corner with the wheel icon, click on it, and choose whatever you wish for your teleportation setting to be. Personally speaking, I have changed the setting to confirm for all costs above guild allowance, and I set the guild allowance to 1000 guild. Now obviously you can set the allowance for yourself to whatever guild you wish for it, it really depends on your personal preferences and your personal usages of these tickets. Oh on to number 4, we got cutscene skipping. Do you want to skip the cutscene of the same old content that you queue into for leveling or daily roulettes or other reasons? And have you ever wondered how your party members always seem to be able to skip the cutscene faster than you regardless of how fast you press the escape key when you start or finish a dungeon or a trial or really any instances that involve uh, cutscenes? Press the escape key, go to general, under the general setting, you have the cutscene skipping options. Select these two options and here you go. Now you will automatically skip the cutscenes that you have already watched. Since I don't own a house and have no intention to either, I don't know how much the skip playback of housing cutscenes will benefit you, so I'll leave that to you. Coming up next for our number 5 spot is the type emo function. During your MSQ progression, there will be times that you are required to perform emotes in order to continue whatever you are doing. I for one was so dumb that I actually got stuck on this when I encountered this instance for the first time. After I realized what I need to do after some YouTube searching, I went into my emote tab and searched one after another in order to find the correct emote. All in all, a lot of time wasted. Well first, a bonus tip if you will, in the search menu of your email tab, you can type in the email you're looking for and find it directly. Secondly, you don't even have to get into your email tab. On your text box, type this thing and whatever the name of the email that you are required to perform at the moment following that and just hit enter on your keyboard. Your character will automatically do the corresponding email that you typed. There are actually a lot more actions that you can perform using this function on a text box, but emote is probably the one that most beginner players especially will use during in their um, story progression journey. Then for number 6, we got the macro key to make your shiny weapon shine while you sheath it. 
which I also mentioned only briefly in my last 10 tips video. This tip is just for the looks and it doesn't have any actual functions to it. But since FF14's true name is Fashion Fantasy or Final Fashion 14, it may as well be actually functional. So in short, you need to go into your user macro, then create a brand new macro key by clicking on any of the slot that you have not input a macro already, then input the following lines. Oh, also really quick, did you know that you can change your macro key's appearance by clicking here and choose any of the icons? Well, now you know. What this does is to essentially allow your character's newly obtained shiny weapon to still be shiny while you seize it after a short animation. This effect will be active as long as you stay in the same area that you use the animation in. It will be gone after you enter an instance teleported among others. What this does is allow you to take 6 screenshots while also have your weapon sheathed because some or most of the emotes will require your weapon to be sheathed. For example, have you ever wondered how I was able to record my character wearing a fashion accessory while having my weapon shine on my back? This is how. Notably speaking, this also will work when you are on your mods. There are a lot more macro function keys that a player can use to save a bunch of time, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to stick to this one macro key. On to number 7, we got Auto Walking. FF14 sure is a game that requires a lot of walking from the players. Like really, a lot of walking. Especially when you have not unlocked flying in that particular area. And even when you eventually do unlock flying in that area, there is often still a lot of flying. In order to walk, sprint, fly, or do any kinds of moving, a player gotta press the WASD on their keyboard. 5-10 minutes is fine, but if you keep pressing it for hours on end during a dedicated grinding or story progression session, it adds up on your fingers even when you are just pressing down on one key. Now I don't know if this mechanic was actually introduced officially in the game or not. If the game introduced it, then it must have been something that I skipped again. So the mechanic is that if you press the middle key on your mouse, you get to auto walk, sprint, or fly by default. All you gotta do is to move your mouse around to guide your character. No keyboard pressings required. The camera guiding can be legacy movement specific, which I recommended in my last video, and you should definitely change the default movement setting to the legacy movement due to various reasons. Oh my God. Then for number 8, we got don't throw things away and be selling them if you have to. During your journey, have you ever thrown away gears or stuffs that you no longer need to maybe just free up some space in your inventory? Well, first of all, don't throw things away. Stop it. In FF14 is a game that has little meaningless things. Things that you think are meaningless now can turn out to be something meaningful later on when you learn about new things. You don't want to find out that a key component to something that you are currently grinding for, you have actually obtained that centuries ago, but you have also thrown away those items when you blissfully ignorant about the thing that you're currently doing, right? Personally speaking, I have never done that. Yeah, I have definitely never done that. Yeah. Fuck. 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 To the very least, many of the items that you think about throwing away can be sold in one way or the other, and the game actually offers a great way in doing so. Without spoilers, there's a quest line that opens up once you beat Stormblood in Dolmen Enclave. How do you get there after MSQ? Watch my first 10 tips video. Anyway, this quest line will eventually allow you to sell things in your inventory for double the item's game's value for a budget per week. While I would recommend against just selling things there that you think are junks, without at least checking the market board prices for them. There are certain items in the game that are built for this. You remember the money bags that you take for rewards after certain quests? Don't sell them to a random trader. Sell them here for literally double the price. And for the more valuable money bags, the 20k gil ones that you get through one way or the other, you literally get 40k per week by selling those. On to number 9, never cap out on a currency. FF14 has a lot of currencies, and other than Gil that you probably won't be capping out on anyway, you should never cap out on a specific type of currency, which I have in this case scenario, and I would highly recommend not to do the same. My reason is that I have not played the game dedicatedly in quite a while. While early on, it is the easiest to cap out on the elegant tombstone, especially if you are faithfully doing daily roulettes to level up. There is so much use of this currency that I genuinely regret to not know sooner during my playthroughs. 
For instance, you can start saving up for the shiny Heaven Sword weapons which require a shitload of this currency very early on. In terms of what specifically do you need or how much do you need, I would recommend this video by Desperius, and if I pronounce your name wrong, I'm sorry. This relic series is IMO the best weapons for Dragoon and Dark Knight which I have both done a video on and I highly recommend just checking the uses of this currency in general. In the least, you can get sick glamours from the Splendor vendor after you've done each expansion. These gears, while looking cool as fuck in most case scenarios, are the second best gears from that expansion. Other currencies such as the Grant Company seals and PvP money also have various ways of usages. The former can be used to prep for ARR relic grind, and the latter can be used to purchase a variety of gears. So overall, don't cap out, do your research on how to spend, and be always spending. Capitalism is the key. Finally, for number 10, we got how to change targeting in the game. Have you ever got frustrated by the tap auto selection function in the game? That you wanted to switch to the closest enemy to you and instead it chooses the one that is a galaxy away from you? And have you ever been frustrated when you have to either click onto an enemy or use the tap key to switch to a different enemy after you just killed one? What if I tell you you can fix all those problems in just under 20 seconds and get on with your life being a better FF14 combatant? or happier at least. First, open your keybind section and go to targeting. You will immediately notice why your tab key does not always function like how you want to, because it is set to select from closest to further. But if you to scroll down further on that page, you will find an empty keybind by default that allows you to select whatever enemy is the closest to you. Here is a quick example of this keybind in action. Set this to whatever you like and problem 1 is solved. The second step is to go to character configuration, target tab. Enable the second and third function key on the target setting if they are not already. The effect of enabling the third is as follows. and the effect of enabling the force is self-explanatory. Then go below to the auto-target setting. Enable both and the effect is as follows. The next one comes down to personal preference, but I prefer to have target type closest enemies type 2 cone. This will allow your tab key to select enemies from a cone shape in front of you. It does not follow your character, but follow whichever way your camera is pointing at. Once you do these setting changes and get yourself familiar with these keys, trust me, you will immediately notice the difference in any sort of combat. Oh my God. With number 10 done, this video concludes. Hopefully these tips will make you waste less time on your FF14's journey and enjoy the game even more. Leave a like if you found the tips to be useful or let me know what you think of them. This channel is very close to hitting 400 subscribers and thank you for the support in general. Thanks for watching also and peace out.